Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter six, talking about test tools and automation and continuing ahead with the same topic that is 6.2, tool selection. But as a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding ROI, return on investment. In order to understand what exactly the turn on investment is, of course, from the name itself, a lot of us can actually make out that what exactly this topic is all about. But before that, of course, in our previous tutorial, we tried understanding that how exactly sometime we decide on going with open source tools, sometime we make use of custom tools which are in-house built, and sometimes there are paid licensed based tools as well, which might be utilized. But at any particular scenario, be it whatever you are trying to make use of within your organization for your projects, you have to calculate the return on investment. That means what is that you get in return what you invested today? Now, it might be possible that you're putting your efforts compared to paying the license cost, or probably you are paying the license cost to reduce your effort. But in both the scenarios, there is something which you basically calculate is what is that you get as benefit after putting this effort or investment. And that's what we will be understanding here in more detail that what exactly the turn on investment is and how test manager is important or crucial in terms of determining that. It is a very common responsibility of the test manager to ensure that all the tools introduced into the testing organization add value to the team's work and can show a positive ROI to the organization. To ensure that a tool will achieve real and test lasting benefits, a cost-benefit analysis should be performed before acquiring or building a tool. Now what exactly cost-benefit ratio here stands for, which basically shows that what is that you will be invest investing and what is that you will be getting as a benefit. For example, if I'm doing something manually right now and it costs me around uh, kind of, you know, 100,000 rupees or $100,000 and then Tomorrow, I want to adopt a tool which is around $50,000 and uh, can further require some of the manual efforts up to $30,000, but putting it all together still cost me only $80,000, whereas earlier I was trying to put $100,000 effort, including the cost or maybe doing it manually. So by adopting a simple tool or creating a tool within the organization, it can save at least $20,000 of your project money. So that's where we talk about the cost benefit, that what is that you are investing and what is that you're going to get in return. Now, in this analysis, the ROI should consider both recurring as well as non-recurring cost, because a lot of the time, organization only think about the non-recurring cost initially, because when it comes to procuring any tool or any software, generally we talk about what are the big cost involved. So of course, the initial acquisition cost uh, can be the cost of the tool, can be the cost of initial licensing, it can be the cost of initial infrastructure, training, but you don't count the mentoring part. That means training is fine, but consistent mentoring is equally important. Time to time upgrades happens, time to time patches are released, hard fixes are released by the vendor. And it might be something related to your project as well and you have to go for it. So you did not consider about this. So that's where today we will be starting with understanding what are those recurring and non-recurring costs which should be considered in order to determine an effective cost-benefit ratio. Some of which are monetary and some of which are resources or time cost-based and the risk that may be, that may reduce the value of the tool as well. So starting with the very first thing here is the non-recurring cost including uh, these following options. Non-recurring cost means fixed cost. That means this is one-time investment and don't have to repeat those uh, amount of money or effort again and again. For example, defining the tool requirements to meet the objective and goals. That's a one-time activity. Of course, you don't do that again and again. Evaluating and selecting the correct tool and the tool vendor. Purchasing, adapting, or developing the tool. Performing the initial training for the tool. Integrating the tool with the other tools and procuring the hardware and software needed. That's the infrastructure to support the tool. Now, of course, these are all very straightforward things to understand that these are one-time investments and does not really require you to do a lot of repetition of activities. But at the same time, of course, when we talk about the non-recurring costs, like the recurring cost 
uh, are the fixed ones sorry non recurring costs are the fixed ones whereas recurring are repetitive that means this these are some of the effort or consumption of time or maybe the money uh, which are repeatable that means at certain interval of time you have to do it again for example owning the tool which includes licensing and support fees now licenses are generally released quarterly and annually or half yearly now depending on your usage so today you have bought licenses for 50 users up to six months of time but again the project got extended or you got a new project and you want to continue then again the licenses have to be bought for the next six months so similarly these are actually the recurring cost where you generally have to buy licenses no matter you have bought a car so it's just like you know buying a car is non-recurring cost but filling in the fuel you know filling in the gas all the time whenever you travel or make use of the car is actually recurring cost Maintenance cost of the tool itself, that means uh, updates, updates, uh, you know, upgrades, patches, which are released by the vendors. Maintenance of the artifacts created by the tool, you may have to dedicate people in order to manage all the artifacts which are generated, which are including the logs or, you know, the files, the outputs, and a lot many other things which are prepared and generated by the automation testing tools. Ongoing training and mentoring costs. Again, like recurring could be, uh, you know, the training as well as mentoring because training can be for the new users or new joinees who always will be there as a part of your organization and mentoring is of course to support them throughout even though they are trained so giving them that effective way of making use of it in order to achieve that benefit from the tool porting the tool to a different environment migration sometime you do have to do it then that is additional cost and probably you do it quite often moving from one platform to another adapting the tools to the future needs and improving the quality and processes to ensure optimal use of the selected tools. Now that gives you a very clear picture of being a test manager when you are conducting cost benefit ratio measurement, you do have to consider both the types of cost, that is recurring as well as non-recurring. Because generally when you skip one of these, you generally do not have the right outcome or right determination at what you need to consider. The test manager should also consider the opportunity cost inherent in any tool, the time spent on acquiring, administering, a training and using the tool could have been spent on actual testing tasks. Therefore, most testing resources may be needed up uh, upfront until the test goals uh, goes online. Now, here the tool goes online basically stands for that there are sometimes, you know, some opportunity cost involved, which is generally not considered in terms of like recurring or non-recurring cost but here of course people who will be investing from the project duration for example you have a project of three months of time and two weeks of time or maybe three weeks of time your team takes to understand a new tool or probably build a tool so of course he was one of your resources in the team who was supposed to conduct the testing activities but right now he or she is busy testing the tool which your developers are making now that's not calculated from the client schedule or budget, right? Now in the project schedule and project budget, this was not considered. So sometimes we do have to consider those inputs as well that we will be taking away three weeks of time or maybe four weeks of time in order to test this tool before we can start making use of it. And that's where the manager should also look into those kind of costs which are involved in terms of money or effort which will be applied by your team itself. Also to talk about here that there are many risks to uh, tool usage. And of course, from the foundation, you can recall a lot of risk involved which were associated with the uh, artifacts, integration, interoperability, vendor issues, and uh, ownership issues. There are a lot of things which might turn into risk if not considered before selecting the tool or before making use of the tool. So there are many risks to the tool usage. Not all tools actually supply benefits that outweigh the risk. Tools risk were discussed in the foundation level, which you know already the test manager should consider all the following risk items given or considered for the return on investment. For example, immaturity of the organization. Your process uh, of the organization is not so mature enough to handle the tool because tool, tool may require you to prepare all the documentation or necessary uh, activities to be done at certain point of time so that you are prepared to run an automation test by the time you come to the execution. So maturity of the process plays a vital role in adoption of a tool. If in case your process is not at all mature, like you're talking about level one, level two, 
where you are at initial or manage state and uh, you do not have anything well defined then obviously the tool will not return you the benefits you can make use of it see you, you can be ad hoc but you can make use of tool but you cannot expect that investment or a return on investment so another thing here is artifacts created by the tool may be difficult to maintain because uh, you probably don't know how to manage them you just thought that it's going to be a tool which is going to help us to automate our activities but you forgot that the assets which are generated by the tool the artifacts which are generated by the tool are equally important these require multiple revisions sometimes so version controlling that configuration management tools to be integrated to that a lot of many things has to be done uh, when the software is changed then this maintenance comes into picture further to add of course reduction of the test analyst involvement in testing task may reduce the value of testing from the point of like defect detection effectiveness may be reduced on when only automation scripts are run now you would see that here the role of the test analyst here is basically to uh, work from the point of process improvement or work from the point of adding value by detecting those defects and making sure the defect rate is reduced and a lot of many other tasks which you can actually explore in the test analyst syllabus but here what we are saying that if you completely rely on automation or generally try to just because you have got a tool you want to do that through the tool all the time then you are actually you know creating that uh, less interaction of the test analyst with the process and the activity because most of the things your tools are doing so the test analyst interaction becomes less and that could result into quality factor that means it can also degrade your quality of the product which basically a human interface is required for so that's where another one of the demerit is or risk involved is there so no matter whatever you do you need to consider that the test analyst equally has the contribution no matter it is test script but only the limited automation is being done or if it is done it is further manually evaluated that what kind of outcomes are being provided by the tool because those inputs and outputs will be very important for consideration further to decide the overall outcome finally to add here we are talking about the test manager must also look at the benefits that may accrue from the use of the tools now accrue basically stands for accumulation which you can see from time to time probably after making use of the tools and benefits of the tool introduction can include all these factors but one thing to be remembered at this particular point of time you just can't calculate return on investment right from the next day when you start using the tool it takes certain duration it takes certain time to people to get effective to it people to get efficient to it and be aware of different options and being more proficient while using the tool again i will use the same simple example that every individual in an organization knows how to make use of uh, excel sheets or workbooks but not everyone is proficient in using the excel right so that's what the same thing here is probably i trained 50 50 people in my organization with this new tool and i realize that uh, not everyone is capable enough to run the test the way it is supposed to be executed a lot of them try to make certain basic mistakes and i have to give them time in order to learn that and uh, perform those activities which would be uh, helping you to add more value in your overall progress so that's where we do consider some of the accumulation and from certain point of time you can decide that when exactly you have to calculate the return on investment because it's just not that you bought a car and you start expecting the mileage right from the day one it takes some time for the engine and other things to set up so that it can give you that mileage what you're expecting anyways uh, so what are those factors so which must be uh, considered in terms of benefits from the tool like reduction in repetitive work if you have got a tool then your repetitive works must be automated or done through the tool reduction in the test cycle team cycle time that means if you are having a tool and still your cycle time is the same that means the tools are actually not helpful so you it's time you should look forward to another solution reduction in the test execution cost uh, which is another important aspect to be taken into account here and then comes increase in certain types of testing for example regression testing and all which could uh, talk about the regression cost being increased because you know, if you have a tool 
then regressions are a good candidate of automation. And if you are not able to automate them, then what's the point of having the tool again? So think from both the points of view, which will give you the answer of having a benefit from these points. Reduction in human error in different phases of testing. We say that tools are more accurate and humans are error prone. So if your tool are able to do that, then why are you getting the errors? That means the tool is not capable enough to handle such things. So in simple details, if you try to break that uh, down in further, the test data may be more valid using data generation tool. Uh, test result comparison may be more accurate using comparison tools. The test data entry may be more correct by entering it with a scripting tool. So you just have to find that scope, which is more important for you to identify the benefits from the overall tool. Reduction in effort required to access information about the test. So in accessing information from the point of test management tool, if you are getting a test management tool for your organization, the access to the information becomes more simpler and systematic. That means you don't have to drill down through hundreds of files, hundreds of folders and look for a particular file. Here you have everything systematically arranged. You just have to go to that particular segment and pick up the necessary data, what you need to want. And uh, some of the example here includes the tool generated reports and matrices could be one of the things which will be easy to uh, identify if in case you are unable to identify them or create them, then tool is not serving you for the reason. Reuse of the test assets such as test cases, test script and test data should be also enabled, you know, already because you might have used a test management tool by now. Increase in testing that has not uh, that was not possible without tools. Uh, for example, performance testing, load testing, you bought the tool for that and you know, you're not getting that return. And improvement in the status of testers who create automation and uh, the testing organization as a whole by demonstrating the understanding and use of sophisticated tools. Now that's all the benefits put together to determine that are you really having, you know, the benefits from the tool or not? If in case not, you look forward to something else. Well, anyways, that's all from this particular tutorial team. I hope you had a good, good understanding of what exactly ROI is all about and how a test manager should consider in order to have an adequate outcome. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.